is my previous component and I have repeating images in it. When I roll over an image, I want it to animate bigger. All I did was take my previous component layout text and added this keyframe information. And I'm going to get rid of this keyframe information. That was just for testing. So I'm looking for it to scale upward. And the type of scale I want is that easing up. And I'm going to create a hover state for my image. That's the sidebar image. Side underscore bar image will have some type of hover state. I'm going to be changing this out soon using JavaScript. This is just a test. The animation name that take five, the animation name will be that keyframe animation right down here. Let me move it up a little bit. Bring it right underneath the hover state. And let's try it out. Refreshing the page. And there's our image. You can see that this image is expanding the component. It's overriding it because this isn't a PNG. So instead of using a JPEG, if I use PNGs here, it might be a bit better of an experience. Here I am in Photoshop and I'm exporting PNGs of my JPEG hats. I knocked out the background. And now I'll go back to my HTML editor and I'll replace all the hats with. PNG versions. And we'll get a little further than before. Now we'll be able to see the text behind the image. Refreshing. Now I'm rollover. See a little text popping through, which is kind of fun. We have these scroll bars showing up, and I don't want the scroll bars to show up. Let me go to my sidebar, which is this overall component from sidebar div to slash div. And I'm going to the sidebar and not this sidebar, actually. It's the main class of the sidebar right here. Right now I have autoflow auto. What if I set that to hidden? Save it. Refresh. And now our hats will just get bigger in that space. That's an interesting look. To achieve this, I resaved my JPEGs, and JPEGs have a solid background. This is a PNG and has a transparent alpha background. That means I could put any color behind it or leave the alpha there so other things behind it will show through, while JPEG has a solid background. And by switching to PNG, this means as you roll over the image and it gets bigger because we're animating the scale, you can still see some of the text. So it's not interfering when the JPEG was there. It just cut out a big block of text. So maybe this is the look you want. The other thing I had to do, originally I had overflow as auto. And auto can be very useful for just making boxes as big as they are. But auto in this case had automatically scrolling. And I don't want any scroll bars showing up in my components. So my choices for overflow are scroll, where you always show the scroll bar, visible, where it will show whatever is hidden. Invisible doesn't work out with our component look. Look what it does, it just messes up everything. Auto didn't mess up things. Auto is working great for overflow until I introduced this ability to animate by rolling over to animate this bigger. Solution was hidden. Anything that goes beyond the defined space, just hide it. Usually of text, you don't want that to happen because you want people to be able to read, consume the text. With this image, it kind of makes sense because we're just adding a little bonus, image getting bigger, applying this animation transformation to 
just the image by using sidebar image with a hover state. This is interesting. What if though you didn't want this to be the hover state? We had some other button like click here to zoom in or something like that going on. Something that's not associated with this. Right now, this is active through the hover state. What if we wanted to click here and something else happens over there, another CSS? So instead of defining sidebar image and all this as a hover state, I'm just going to call this sidebar zoom. No hover state anymore. I'm going to use JavaScript with an on mouse over to apply a JavaScript function, and that JavaScript function will apply this zoom style to that hat. I'm going to link a script called zoom.js. I'm going to make a new file. And I'm going to save that as zoom.js. File, save as zoom.js. And within here, I'm going to have a function. I'm going to need two functions in the end, but this is the start. That function will be zoom big. And what zoom big will do, it's going to find an element, the image element, and it's going to apply a class to it. And that class will be our animation class, which is this zoom bar big, and I'll apply that to the image. Identify this image by giving it an ID. ID equals, let's say it's called my thumbnail01, and that's the ID for this one. And this one will be ID equals thumb thumb zero two. And of course the third one will be thumbnail number zero three. That way we can refer to each thumbnail using JavaScript. So ID for this image of hat or this image of hat has a unique name on the page. And I'll just create a div. And within that div will be the word zoom. And I'll have a JavaScript in it. On mouse enter. When you roll over this area, do something. What will you do? You could do the zoom big function. Zoom big. I'm going to pass some information to this zoom big. What do you want in zoom big? We want to pass this information about which thumbnail to make big. Thumbnail 01. I'm going to copy and paste this to the other components. And just changing which thumbnail do I want to see bigger. Thumbnail 02, I want to see bigger. And here I want to see thumbnail 03 bigger. Just to test this out, I'm going to make an alert box. Alert something. And this zoom big has to take in information. What information is being passed? The name of the thumbnail to get bigger. All right. So alert. I'll just call it name of thumbnail or thumb. And it's going to alert here. Now using console log is a much better way to do this. For this video, alert box, easy to see. If I did everything correctly, on mouse enter, when I roll over here, we should see an alert box referring to each one of these. Let me give it a test. Here's my alert box, 01, 02, and 03. All right, so we got a communication going in between this rollover and the JavaScript. Now that that's happening, just have to replace this with something more meaningful. What will be more meaningful instead of an alert box coming up is to apply a style to that image that makes it zoom. And that style that we're going to apply to that image is this sidebar zoom. And what will make this more meaningful is to add a style to the appropriate image, the one that has been targeted with the ID with the name passed right here of the ID. 
with the selector name being passed right here. And that style that will be applied is this class. And this function will do this. Go to the document, get element by ID, name of thumb, and name of thumb is being passed right here on mouse enter. Instead of on mouse enter, let's do on click. On click, zoom, pass in which ID to apply to this function. Here to here, find the list of classes applied to this element and add the sidebar zoom and the sidebar zoom is all that animation info. On click, gets bigger. Now here's my new JavaScript function. Zoom back passing in the same information, which selector to target with the get element by ID and the class list remove the same sidebar that was added and on mouse out, smaller. Click, bigger, mouse out, smaller. We want that to animate back into position. We can use a style on rollover and roll out, it snaps back each one of these images. On click, it will toggle in between, which will be good for mobile because touch screens don't have rollovers. So click, click. Let's see how this was achieved. Going to the JavaScript, this new function tests if the sidebar zoom class exists on the current element and call zoom back which is the function that removes the sidebar class from that element. If it doesn't exist on the element, then add it. Now, zoom maybe was added to allow for, to allow for on clicking to happen. On click will mainly happen on mobile, since on mouse enter and on mouse out will not happen on mobile. Can't check for rollover events. It just snapping back. I want it to scale back. I'm going to the animation keys. I'll make a new key. And this one will start from 1.5 as a scale. And it's going to end scaling back to the original 100% or 1. Instead of change scale, I can write restore scale. We want to add underscore to this to make it cleaner to read. Now that I added this keyframe, I need to create a new class. I have sidebar zoom here. And I'll, maybe I'll call this sidebar zoom back. And the name of the keyframes animation is going to use is restore scale. Copy that, paste it. Now I have to wire this into the JavaScript. What we want to achieve on mouse out or when you do the second click for that animation to play. On zoom back, removes the current scaled up image. Let me add. the class to the zoom back. Remove what makes you zoomed up and then add to this class the zoom back part. I also have to remove this zoom back when we go big. In case it's been applied to that element already, I'll just remove it. Let's see if this works. Refresh, zoom big, zoom out. Zoom big, zoom out. Big out, big out with clicks. Click small, click big, click small, click big. Excellent. I'm going to change the timing. So zoom back. Let's make it happen across a quarter second. Maybe I'll just make it a ease instead of ease out. Big, small. See, it returns a little quicker. It's good. Or click will do this as well. To review, each component 
has a on mouse enter when you roll over the image. This function is called on mouse out. This function is called or on click toggling between open close open close. The zoom maybe check to see if this element being passed into this function contains the zoom big class, which calls the keys for zooming up. And if it does, then just remove it, meaning, oh no, you don't want to zoom this up anymore. But if it doesn't, add it, meaning yes, make this element scale upward. The zoom big function removes any previous animation applied to zoom it back or to scale it down, and then adds the class that will make it go big. While the zoom back function removes the class that makes it go big, scaled up, and then adds the class that makes it zoom back. And that's how all this works. Not that many lines of code, just talk through the story of what you need to happen and figure out the code from there.